Men and women worldwide are either scared of the deadlift, thinking that it's going to bust their back, or they are performing them like a freaking scaredy cat and are actually going to hurt their back, LOL. Today, we break down the deadlift setup, proper form, and some common questions. So let's deadlift. But before we do that, the lighting in here is lovely naturally, but it is changing so much because of the sun and we are trying very hard to control it. So please just excuse the like dramatic changes that may be happening from scene to scene. I am Annie Miller and I help you learn as you train and enjoy your lifts again without having to figure it out for yourself. After today's video, you should no longer be left to fend for yourself when deadlifting. I am here to help. The deadlift is a classic compound movement and is categorized as a pull exercise, but it's really more of a hybrid of push-pull. We have the quads pressing the floor away to extend the knees and the hamstrings and glutes extending the hips, pulling them into the bar. Here comes the light change. So it is a lower body push pull, as I said. The push portion is due to the quads pressing the floor away as you stand. It primarily works the posterior chain, so the hamstrings, the glutes, the mid, low, and upper back, but also it is a systemically taxing exercise because it involves your entire body. For the setup, I mentioned this in my bench press walkthrough as well, so be sure to check that video out. It'll be linked in the description. But the setup of your deadlift is 70% of the lift because from your setup, you're literally just standing. Up. So we want a really solid and mechanically advantageous position. Your feet are going to be within or under your hips, toes pointed straight forward, and the whole foot needs to be flat on the floor. You can either wear shoes or wear flat shoes. We do not want to be in some kind of marshmallow shoe with a lot of cushion or roll side to side for the deadlift. The bar is going to be over your mid foot. This is a mistake that a lot of people make because they roll the bar back all the way to their shins. It's not a huge deal, but if that is something you're doing, try pulling with the bar over your midfoot so it'll be like slightly behind the ball of your foot that's where we want to start your hips are going to shoot back and you reach down for the bar the grip width will be directly underneath your shoulders or determined by your leg width if you have a slightly wider stance and your arms aren't exactly perpendicular to the floor it's okay you can do either a double overhand grip or an alternating grip i suggest going double overhand as long as you can before your grip starts to tax and then you can go alternating again this isn't going to make or break anything it is just something that i suggest and and your shoulders are going to be slightly over the bar when you get set up. If you can't pull 135 pounds or you don't have access to bumper plates, which are the same size no matter what weight they are, then you can pull from an elevated plate or some kind of elevated surface that is safe to pull from because standard metal plates, if you're using 25 pounds or 35 pounds, they are a smaller diameter than a standard bumper plate. And we wanna make sure you're pulling from the same height no matter what weight you're doing. So if you elevate those, be sure that you are getting to that mid shin position. So you've got your stance and your grip. Now we find the tension, as I say, before standing up. You can think of this as your activation. It's the pre-pull setup. You want tight lats to lock in your upper back, or you can say break the bar. Some people like to think about getting their elbow pit to turn forward. All of those things are just to engage your lats and your upper back because we don't want that to move once you stand up. Find the tension in your hamstrings and your eyes are going to be five to eight feet in front of you. We just don't want you looking directly at the ground or looking up at the ceiling. So try to keep a neutral neck position wherever your eyes fall, that's okay. I'm not losing sleep over where your eyes are, but keep them in one spot and let's please not look up at the ceiling. Thank you. Note, your shins may be vertical or slightly positive. Either is fine. Due to differences in limb length and torso ratios, your deadlift will look different than someone else's. The deadlift is your setup. You quite literally just stand up like a pulley system once everything is locked in in your setup position. I consider the deadlift to have two pulls. So the first pull is to the knee. The hips and the shoulders raise at the same time. Unless you're a fitness influencer, then the hips always raise first. Let's go ahead and keep the bend and snap reserved for the fits pose. That's it until your knees. The second pull is past the knee. So you're actively pulling the bar into your hips and hips into extension, not hyperextension. So go ahead and think tall spine at the top of your deadlift. As you lower down, it's literally just the reverse of coming up. So the hips sit back first, and then you can go ahead and bend the knees as the bar passes the knees. We do not want to get in this position where we're letting the hips drop forward because you're bending the knees too early. So as you lower, initiate by sitting the hips back. For your bar path, 
It should be vertical, straight up, straight down, no swinging out in the front, no losing any tension, no rolling back and forth. This is where videoing yourself and your lifts can be so helpful. It can feel like our bodies are doing one thing and then we watch it back and we are false. The body is doing another thing. If you need help with this, go ahead and check out my big lift audit. She's cheap and real helpful. That covers the main technique for the conventional deadlift. Now for some common questions. How the fuck do you breathe? <laughs> This is a very common question. You have options as to where you breathe and rebreathe or breathe and brace in the deadlift. The goal of breathing in any large compound movement is to create intra-abdominal pressure. This largely protects the spine, but it also creates rigidity that helps transfer force from the ground through your lower body and up through the upper body. Do you need to breathe and brace at full intensity every lift? No. You do not. I think the intensity of bracing should match the intensity of the lift. For lower loads, you should be able to actually breathe through the movement, for instance, inhaling on the way down through the lift and exhaling on the way up or where you exert effort. So let's assume that you do need to breathe and brace. At the top in a neutral standing position, you're going to take a breath in, down, back, and into the sides like a balloon, then briefly breathe out and draw the pelvic floor up and compress through your obliques and abs. Contracting the core muscles locks in that air, creating the pressure that we're after. Once you do this, you'll bend down, get set, take a quick rebreath, and then lift. You can do the same thing at the top and the bottom of the lift. You don't necessarily have to rebreath at the top if you don't want to. You can just take a rebreath at the bottom. So reset reps versus touch and go. A reset rep looks something like this. Versus a touch and go rep that looks more like this. You can do either. Reset is harder because you're initiating the pull from a dead weight each time. The challenge with touch and go is controlling the dynamic bit where the plates are bouncing off of the floor. Either way, it is vital that you are controlling the eccentric, which is the lowering portion of the movement. This becomes more difficult in the touch and go because it can be really easy to just drop and bounce off the floor and enter your next rep. So be careful you're not doing that. Rounding the back. Should you do it? Should you not? Is it safe? Is it not? Please know that we have no substantial literature linking a round back to injury. That doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but why? Any position can lead to injury when load exceeds capacity. Where we see this injury most commonly happen is in individuals who do not train at this position and only break neutral when pulling the heaviest load, so context matters. Those who train a rounded back position and have built capacity here do not seem to have an issue. Do I suggest it? No, not for most common gym goers, but also see my video on how neutral spine did me wrong. To use straps or not to use straps. They're totally fine, but I do suggest that you use them before being fully fatigued. They can be used anytime grip is a limiter, so high volume or high load. In regards to how to use them, you would put them on pre-setup, then do your setup and you're locked in. There you go. That is your crash course in the conventional deadlift. How do we feel about it? Let me know in the comments below. If you want me to break down another exercise, let me know which one and I would be happy to do so. I'll catch you guys in the next video.